Coming up tonight, a hundred trucks loaded with humanitarian assistance for IDPs have left for Yaounde for the northwest and southwest regions. The gifts are from the presidential couple Paul and Chantal Bia. The nation's most beautiful woman will be known tonight at the final of the 2020 Miss Cameroon in Yaounde. 20 are called, one will be chosen to carry the national flag. And works on training facilities and playgrounds for the 2020 African Nations Championship have been described as satisfactory by Sports and Physical Education Minister Professor Mwale Kombi. The details now. Thanks for watching the 7.30 News on CRTV. I am Moki Edwin Kinzuka in Yaounde. The presidential couple Paul and Chantal Bia has offered a hundred trucks of food and non-food items to IDPs in the northwest and southwest regions within the framework of the end-of-year feast. The special gifts add to 68 vehicles of similar items, which the coordinator of the humanitarian assistance, Paul Atanganji, Minister of Territorial Administration, describes as a special form from the of gifts from the presidential couple. He disclosed that the government has already assisted 160,000 IDPs in the north west and southwest regions and more than 10,000 in other regions. Let's listen to Minister Paul Atanganji shortly before the departure of the convoy from Yaoundé. This is a convoy which has been dispatched by the presidential couple to help the internally displaced persons in the northwest and southwest regions. I think this is the second time we are carrying out this exercise and this is a clear proof that uh, President Paul Beer has taken all the necessary measures to give assistance to the IDPs in the northern and south region, which means that it is a clear indication that there is no humanitarian crisis in Cameroon. And I made it extremely clear that we have basically 152,000 internally displaced persons in the northern and south regions. Out of these numbers, those who are out of the regions, we have conducted voluntary departure. I think about 5,000 families have gone back to the northwest and southwest regions, which is a clear indication that things are coming back to normalcy. So we are asking our partners who are with us to send the right information because we are in Cameroon, we cannot have 152,000 IDPs and we hear that we have 600,000 IDPs in Cameroon. I think it's not a response, it's not responsible information. And I said it by the way that if I'm bereaved, people should not mourn more than me. So meaning that it's a clear exercise, the humanitarian exercise in Cameroon is that the policies are defined by the government and our partners will just come and align themselves with the policies which have been put by the government. We have received messages from the IDPs <laughs> hearing that we, they have a convoy of 100 uh, vehicles. They are already telling us to thank the presidential couple for this New Year gift, which is a special gift to them and which is a sign that Cameroon is a country of action and President Paul Bia is a man of action. The Miss Cameroon 2020 competition will be this evening. It's to begin at the Yaoundé Multipurpose Sports Complex in an hour's time with 20 contestants expected on stage. These most beautiful ladies from the 10 regions of the country have had a hectic day preparing to appear on stage. Our reporter Joyce Tata caught the preparations for us. They just can't wait for the final round of the competition. The reason for these bold smiles they wear. As beauticians make the magic, others are already in a haste to look astonishing. Every region represented by the 20 contestants. Meanwhile, some ladies were receiving last-minute moral support calls from family, friends and loved ones. After a stop at the salon, they made their way to the Yaoundé Multipurpose Sports Complex for last rehearsals. A tense atmosphere as the technicians gave last instructions as to how the stage should be managed for the success of the event and ensuring the red carpet is ready to have top personalities work on it smoothly. Just at the other end of the hall, the organizing committee had no minute to spare as they held meetings to cut the T's and dot the I's as far as the success of Miss Cameroon 2020 is concerned. Invited guests for the event like Miss Cote d'Ivoire were also present supervising preparations ahead of the competition. Already, Miss Cameroon 2020, an event not to miss tonight. 
The Miss Cameron Beauty Pageant, instituted since 2002, has crowned the most beautiful and intelligent women from across the country that display good moral values. With the 2020 edition taking place today at the Only Multipurpose Sports Complex, Cinder Saptala takes a look at this competition that tries to showcase the beauty of Cameron's culture despite the controversies that often surround it. It is a race for the sparkly tiara and bouquet of flowers. The Miss Cameron Beauty pageant has over the years endeavored to crown the most representative of Cameroon's culture, beauty and brains. This quest, which has been under the control of the committee of Miss Cameroon, Komika, since 2002, has tried to make the selection process as transparent as possible. However, the crowning process is often tinted with squabbles between some contestants and the organizing committee. The Miss Cameroon 2018 contest, a finalist requested compensation for having been fraudulently removed from the top 12 to avoid such disagreements in a contest that each year strives to reward more than just looks. Innovations and reforms are made yearly to enhance the prestigious character of the event. For example, the committee in the last edition obtained a younger and more dynamic team to supervise the competition and the management of MISS projects. The same efforts have been made for the 2020 edition to fulfill all expectations. On to a special segment on decentralization, one of the major innovations in the bill to institute the General Code of Regional and Local Authorities promulgated into law by President Paul Beer last December 24 is the power ceded to local councils. The mayor who is the chief executive now has powers to hire some staff which was formerly the prerogative of the central government in Yaoundé. We shall come back to Cynthia Saptala's report, but let's move now to the multi-purpose sports complex, where the election of Cameroon's most beautiful woman will be taking place tonight. Our reporter, Emanuela Vemnui, is standing by now. Emanuela, what's new out there? <laughs> Mokie Edwin Kindeka, 20 uh, Cameroonians, young and beautiful, talented as well, are uh, chasing the crown for Miss Cameroon 2020 in a beauty pageant that has seen so many of them rush for it in the past years. The organizing committee of Miss Cameroon and the Ministry of Arts and Culture are fully involved in this event that is being uh, headed by the uh, First Lady of Cameroon, Miss is Chantal Bia. At moment it is about arrivals on the red carpet of the event. The night looks like it will be a long one as every visitor here wants to be stand the chance of being a party or a witness to the crowning of the most beautiful woman in Cameroon for 2020. It has to do with the government officials, director generals, all lovers of culture and equally promoters of culture as well. Not for Forgetting those who just want to be, bear their testimony that they were in the night of the making of the most beautiful woman in Cameroon. It is the 14th edition and so many innovations have come to play. It has to do with an international jury that will be sitting this night to decide who wears the crown, the most pre prestigious crown of Miss Cameroon 2020 international jury, therefore comprised of uh, the president who is the one of a special advisor to the minister or to the president of Equatorial Guinea. There are visitors or special guests like Miss England and many others who are part of this beauty pageant. Okay, Edwin, I should emphasize that at moments there it is about the arrivals of the different uh, guests to be part of this event. The Minister of Arts and Culture and uh, the president of Comica are equally in place as the different uh, guests will take their seats at the Yaoundé Sports Complex expecting the official kickoff of uh, the beauty pageant and it will be at the end that we shall therefore see who will succeed Amy Caroline Seke as Miss Cameroon 2020. Over to you Moki Edwin. Well, thanks Emanuela, looking like a Miss Cameroon to be. 
On to our special segment on decentralization, one of the major innovations in the bill to institute the General Code of Regional and Local Authorities promulgated into law by President Paul Bia last December 24 is the power ceded to local councils. The mayor, who is the chief executive, now has powers to hire some staff, which was formerly the prerogative of the central government in Yaoundé. Cynthia Saptala reports. Before the December 2019 bill to institute the General Code of Regional and Local Authorities, it was the Ministry of Public Service and Administrative Reform that was charged with the recruitment of administrative staff. One major innovation of the new bill which devolves powers to local councils is the ability to recruit staff in certain areas. Based on the 116-page document in Part 2 on the rules applicable to councils, Section 160 states that as one of their new competencies, the councils are now responsible for the recruitment and management of nursing staff and paramedics of integrated health centers and subdivisional health centers. What this means is that in the far north region, for example, with its estimated 356 public health facilities, the councils can hire nursing staff in health centers as need be. The same prerogative is given to councils in section 161, where they now can recruit and manage teaching and support staff of schools found within the municipality. The mayor, as the council's authorizing officer, is, according to Section 209, allowed to perform duties in accordance to the Labor Code and collective agreements. These innovations have been highly saluted as it resolves issues such as the shortage of teaching staff in remote areas of the country. The University of Yaoundé 2 SWA will be run next year with a budget of over 14 billion seven francs. The budget was decided on by the on the course of a board meeting chaired by professor maurice Twente, president of the board of directors alice may reports one of the main items discussed during the board meeting of the universe of yaoundé 2 was the adoption of the budget for next year after deliberations the sum of 14 billion cfa francs was adopted and this will be largely dedicated to the payment of salaries of lecturers research allowances and the functioning of the institution's library and restaurant other projects for 2020 include the building of a fence over the premises. The board meeting also centered on the examination and validation of the 2018-2019 budget. With the assessment of the projects realized in the course of the year, Professor Maurice Twente urged the director of the University of Yaoundé Tuswa, Professor Adolf Minkwashe, to ensure transparency in the management of the finances of the institution. The meeting was attended by representatives from all the institutions of higher learning under the supervision of the University of Yaoundé too. Five tons of illicit frozen chicken have been destroyed by a crack team of security forces and inspectors from the South Regional Delegation of Livestock Fisheries and Animal Industries. The governor of the South Region, Felis Ngelengele, witnessed the operation, which ensures that no food or good of doubtful quality is sold in the country. Benis Atabong reports. During this end-of-year period, efforts to crack down on the sales of illicit frozen chicken have multiplied in the South region. A crackdown operation that was carried out recently led to the seizure of some 585 cartons of frozen chicken, which is not proper for consumption. The five tons of chicken were destroyed in the Mbanga neighborhood. Upon my instructions, uh, the regional delegate and the forces of law and orders impounded a huge quantity of um, frozen chicken um, uh, coming from neighboring countries. You know these frozen chickens are prohibited. It is a message that we are sending to those who are doing this uh, smuggling activities here in the South region. We hope that by doing so, uh, this phenomenon will be curbed down. Livestock and fishery officials say they will make more efforts to free the South region from frozen chicken, a product whose sales are banned in Cameroon. <music> Our 
As the new year approaches, greeting cards expressing best wishes to loved ones have become common, especially through social media platforms. The senders prefer the electronic cards as they are not only easy to figure out, but sending them to destinations is pity. Joyce Tata talked to fans of social media about their crush for greeting cards. Gone are the days when wishes could only be expressed through design cards. Technology paves the way today for a less costly means of expressing one's wish for family and friends. Now, many customers prefer digital cards because they easily transfer them to their phones and send on WhatsApp. It costs two to 5,000 francs and could take us 30 to an hour to design such messages. Infographers affirm it is the case with youths especially because for big structures like ministries they prefer to print cards and banners a lot of ministries enterprise heads come to us to design cards and banners wishing a happy new year to them it is serious and goes a long term some yaounde city dwellers say as technology evolves they too do same as far as expressing their wishes is concerned personally I've had to send my wishes to family friends using the social media because things have changed today. This means it's easier and less costly. But some still hold that sending messages on social media isn't tangible. Instead, having a card which could be seen at all times is preferable. If you want to talk about the physical part, uh, you can get physical by digital uh, part. It's important to have the two. Be it through online messages, personalized ones or cards, technology could be used satisfactorily in both cases to everyone's advantage for the spread of love as 2020 is around the corner. 2019 is ending as a year the government made several strides to revolutionize Cameroon's digital ecosystems. One of such is the digitalization of public administrations wherein ICTs are being used to facilitate work and the population's access to certain services. Yoti Kalilisonga reviews the digitalization of Cameroon in 2019. Bafusam this year was host to officials of the Ministry of Public Service and Administrative Reform who educated the population on CGPES, a computer interface where civil servants and other public service personnel can have their files treated without necessarily traveling to Yaoundé for the same results. We also have um, uh, interconnection of uh, many councils and many other things that have been effective. It is about the development of the content. Tax is not an enjoyable thing. You want to facilitate the way taxes are being paid. And the custom have been making strides in this area, as well as the Ministry of Finance, in ensuring that certain services are online. We are also uh, working with um, the Economic Commission for Africa to try and implement some of the aspects of uh, e-government. It's just about inserting uh, telecommunications, ICTs, in almost every aspect of governance. That's the core. Branch bank operators too united forces to see how digital banking can become more effective in Cameroon. For the last four or five years, the banking sector has been disrupted from the old brick and mortar banking to what we now know as digital banking in many forms, be it internet, be it SMS, be it mobile banking. It's an ecosystem that we are talking about and that we are trying to create. Cameroonian boarding digital stars were also on the spotlight this year during the ICT Innovation Week, which saw some 15 startups compete for the special prize of the head of state. A series of reflections on frequency band allocation to improve on radio communication in Cameroon, as well as meetings to assess the progress of the Central African Backbone Project were other priority areas this 2019, all geared towards fast-tracking the country's digital economy. President Paul Bia has been very active on social media platforms this year, responding to the preoccupations of Cameroonian people and communicating with them. The president has over 500,000 followers in Twitter. Rainatu Sali reviews the president's tweets in 2019. President Paul Bia has been reaching out to his citizens through different social media platforms, with Twitter being one of the most used platforms to break news. 
Subscribers to his Twitter page are over 500,000, but according to confirmed data, the president follows just 172 persons, and the first lady is his favorite. The tweet fan has been very much active throughout the year, tweeting on important happenings in the country. His tweets on the discontinuance of proceedings against detainees of the MRC and those arrested for Ms. Demenos in connection with the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions were the most retweeted. The president's Twitter page was most followed on the day he tweeted about the convening of the major national dialogue. If we had to do a sum up of the president's tweeting habit, he would have tweeted two to three times a day, tweets which were liked close to 100%. His favorite tweet conveyed the major national dialogue. The president's tweets pull 10,500 followers monthly. To learn about his favorite monthly tweets, visit his hashtag account, hashtag Paul Bia, hashtag Cameroon, hashtag Bia Switch, and hashtag One and Indivisible. President Paul Bia, as chairman of the CPDM party, has extended wishes of peace and fraternity to the Congolese Workers' Party, the PCT, on the occasion of its 58th anniversary or ordinary session and Golden Jubilee. The president's message was delivered by the Secretary General of the Central Committee of the CPDM, Jean Quete, who led a delegation to Congo Brazzaville to attend that session. Caroline Oke Anoma reports. <laughs> Congo and Cameroon has many similarities and many things to share. It is not surprising that on the 50th anniversary of the Congolese Workers' Party, which is the ruling party in the Republic of Congo, has a special place for Cameroon. It is in that light that President Paul Bia's personal representative to Congo, Jean Quete, headed the CPDM delegation to the fifth ordinary session of the Congolese Workers' Party. The two political parties have as goals to effectively support government's efforts and actions of both presidents to ensure national development, continuous improvement of living conditions, reinforce bilateral cooperation and consolidate multilateral links both at the international level and sub-region where Congo and Cameroon belong. During his keynote address, the Secretary General of the CPD the party also transmitted President Paul Bia's New Year wishes as national president and as militant of the CPDM party, but most of all, as a brotherly country whose main goal is to consolidate and reinforce peace, security, and stability, as well as dialogue between the nations, especially in the Semak sub-region. The ceremony was heavily attended by political party, militants, members of the diplomatic mission, and friends from all over the globe. The Auxiliary Bishop of Bamenda, His Lordship Michael Bibi, has been appointed as Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Boya. The papal appointment was made public in the Vatican this Saturday, December 28, 2019. Bishop Bibi has to take up residence in Boya. He, however, remains Auxiliary Bishop of Bamenda. Winston Lebka reports. This is the man chosen by the Supreme Pontiff, Pope Francis, to take up responsibility as interim pastor of Boya Diocese. He is His Lordship Michael Miasbesue, Bibi, aged 48. His Lordship Emmanuel Bushu had tendered him his resignation and uh, the Holy Father accepted because he has reached the age of retirement. And uh, when the bishop tenders in his uh, resignation and the Holy Father accepts, if another bishop has not been appointed, the Holy Father sends an apostolic administrator. Bishop Bibi, however, remains auxiliary bishop of Bamenda and will be resident in Boya, where he is to take up responsibility as apostolic administrator. We'll be running between the two dioceses until when the Diocese of Boya will have a local ordinary, will have a bishop. Many people have been sending messages of congratulations to the Right Reverend Michael Bibi, amongst them the Archbishop of Bermenda, His Grace Cornelius Fontem Eshua, who in a communique wished him every success in his new pastoral responsibility. On to a slot book of the week, we flip through as I move, I 
Strap On, a 12 chapter novel authored by Ben Jama, the set up in, in post independence Cameroon in a society in the northwest region. The novel is a narrative that depicts two villages of Kuta clan in Meme tribe at Daga's Drawn because of one thing who sleeps at the front of the bed. Emanuela Vumi read through that book for the 730 News. As I Move On, I Drop On opens with a chapter on Cohabitat, a vivid description of Abantha, the pivot of the Kuta community. It talks of life in Tumbo Market as a melting pot of all cultures and how transporters often scout it for men in uniform to occupy front seats in their vehicles as a way to evade controls on the highway. Lost in a plethora of settings and natural environment, with a panoply of characters, the author Ben Jama shows how the Kuta community valued its cultures, yet to them the customs, traditions and religions of others were wrong. The story flows from Mwabu, the most renowned citizen of the community, and Be, his hunting dog who was a replica of his master and loved by all, to the divide of Javier Quenko of Kuta, where a marriage succeeds to bring conflict to an entire village. Through the 12 chapters of the novel, Ben Jama presents the traditions of the Kuta people and how culture was taken as life itself. The author, Ngi Christopher Nto, is head of service for administration and personnel in the Faculty of Education in the University of Bamenda and honors his lone surviving uncle, Ta Benedict Jama, with the pen name. Benjama. Sports and Physical Education Minister Professor Nasis Molikombi has expressed satisfaction with the state of advancement of work in the different stadia to host matches for the 2020 African Nations Championship. He visited the different training facilities and playgrounds in Yaoundé today. Bodwin Sama tells us more. Minister Nassis Mwele Kombi's visit to the different play and training grounds comes barely three months to the start of the 2020 African Nations Championship as the minister's first stop was at the military stadium where everything here is ready and the stadium will be used as a training ground by teams to be based in Yaoundé. His next stopover was at the Olympic Sports Complex where officials of Magill Construction explained why they had to carry all over with the drainage system on the field of play before working on the pitch. Concerning the annex stadium, recommendations were made for maintenance work that had stopped to intensify here. We need to encourage uh, the technicians who are working, but I think uh, I think they've done their best. For that reason, I think we very, should be very, very optimistic for what we've seen. At the Young Omnisport Stadium, everything here is ready to host the competition with some renovation work ongoing in the hall to be used for pre- and post-match press conferences. Here, a security belt will be mounted around the exit path for the teams. At the annex number three of the Omnisport Stadium, some work is left to be done, just like at the Bayak Training Complex in Oja, with lack of funds that stopped work from progressing here. Work in these different stadia will have to intensify before the next calf inspection visit in January 2020. And that ends the 730 News on CRTV. Join Karine Olivia Beat in exactly 30 minutes of the news in the French language. I am Moki Edwin Kinzakain Yaoundi. Thanking you for watching.